No matter what your age, you have most likely strapped on a pair of roller skates at some point in your life. Memphis Magazine's history and trivia expert, Vance Lauderdale, looks back at the glory days of roller skating in the Mid-South. He might not be able to do a perfect triple axle anymore, but he can take us back to when rolling on the river had a whole other meaning. Years ago, the Lauderdale mantles fairly glittered with rows of roller skating trophies. In fact, hardly a month went by that an issue of Skating News Magazine didn't feature some member of my family displaying their skills on the polished maple of Memphis area rinks. Youngsters today simply have no idea of the role that skating rinks once played in a town's social life, where they often hosted extravagant and occasionally bizarre entertainment, including races, hockey, roller derbies, and elaborate productions. In fact, those skating news magazines regularly featured couples who got married inside roller rinks with the entire wedding party on skates. And the Lauderdale Library still has roller skating catalogs that offered all kinds of wonderful products, including special skates for dogs, monkeys, and even trained bears. After a few pints of Kentucky Nip, long, dormant memories come back to me, and I can fondly recall many of the roller skating arenas of my youth. One of the first was Rainbow Lake, opened in 1942 by a fella named Leo Piraccini. It also had a swimming pool, shady picnic grounds, and a fancy restaurant named the Rainbow Terrace Room. I especially enjoyed their fried frog legs. In the 1950s, big names like Wink Martindale and Dewey Phillips hosted rock and roll dance parties there that attracted kids by the hundreds. In fact, one of those kids just happened to be a young fella by the name of Elvis Presley. The Rainbow Rollerdrome was where he met his first girlfriend, Dixie Locke. And when his hit record, That's All Right, took off like a comic he brought it out to Rainbow, where Leo played it over and over for the future King's fans. In 1955, Leo decided to open a new establishment in East Memphis, Skateland. Drivers on Summer Avenue could hardly miss this stunning building. A front wall of solid glass, big red neon letters spelling out Skateland above the entrance, and Best of all, three huge white skating boots, complete with spinning neon wheels perched on the roof. Inside, everything was ultra-modern, with sweeping trusses of laminated wood holding up a dome that soared over the largest rink in town. A neon signboard at the back gave skaters their well-known instructions. All skate, trios, ladies, grand march, and when your hour-long session finally came to an end, skates off. It was a truly magnificent building. But for some reason, the first skate land didn't last long. In 1963, Leo sold the building to the Big M Discount Store chain. He built another, smaller skate land, practically across the street, but had the good sense to take those wonderful neon signs with him. Now about this time, another local skating family got into the act. The husband and wife team of Tony and Caroline Morelli, who had won trophies all over the country, opened Skate Haven out on Brooks Road. Judging from old newspaper and magazine ads, it was more than just a place for kids to spin their wheels. One year, for example, Skate Haven presented the Skating Fantasy of 1964, with big production numbers, specialty acts, and even something they called fantasy fairs. My goodness, it must have been quite a show. Other rinks opened in Fraser and Bartlett and South Memphis and the fairgrounds, but most of those old arenas are gone now. Rainbow Lake was turned into a food processing plant for ponchos. The first skate land has housed various stores over the years, most recently a Dollar General CK. The second skate land, still adorned with those great skating signs, closed a few years ago after a fire. And the last time I looked, Skate Haven on Brooks Road was a nightclub. But skating never entirely stopped rolling in Memphis, and it really came back in the 1970s when disco was in full swing. 
disco balls, strobes, and even skates with lighted wheels provided plenty of pizzazz. And today, though there aren't that many rinks around town, a whole new generation has taken part in roller derby. The sport has actually been around since the 1930s, but it still looks mighty fun, though perhaps a bit rough and rowdy for my taste. I confess I've watched some of their bouts, and I'm halfway tempted to get out of my lazy boy and show some of those derby women some real skating moves. Uh, just as soon as I can get my old skates out of the pawn shop. Thank you.